Well, hello, that's me again. Today is Monday, May 15th, and let's get to our business. Let's not procrastinate. I'll start with the um, uh, basically hysteria and uh, schadenfreude, as always, very short lived by the all kinds of trolls, and you can see so, uh, assets who hang around naturally around my blog and my videos. But let me put it this way as a uh, Russian Minister of Defense today. Uh, reported it's today that uh, already the first storm shadow has been uh, shut down and together with it there were 10 HIMARS uh, um, missiles so as you can see yourself this is the telegram channel of Russian Ministry of Defense I cannot access Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation from the United States because its uh, uh, website is blocked so much for the uh, freedom of the uh, uh, of the speech but then we of course can go and even take a look at something else which is of course the those wanted <laughs> uh, leopard tanks and um, if you take a look at it the first one was actually blown out uh, uh, it's blew one of its tracks on the uh, mine landmine then of course it was abandoned then Russians came in and just blew out blew it out or blew up pardon me with the anti-tank grenades and one of them is done second one today was trying to uh, you know attack out of the forest uh, it rolled out received the first hit rolled back immediately and that was it that's pretty much everything you need to know about the effectiveness of leopards so they will be annihilated the same as uh the situation which was happening with the storm shadow and what many people do not understand and this is what i'm trying to constantly convey and uh you know i understand many people especially lay people who do not understand what their warfare is and they read the mass media they're getting hysterical sometimes because of for the good reasons because they want Russia to immediately win drive to Kiev you know and just destroy NATO well it doesn't work like this sadly for this uh, uh, particular case of war or special military operation but the point is that uh, for example as it was the case with the storm shadow which was launched as you might expect it totally at the civilian targets in Lugansk two of them broke through and you have to understand those civilian targets Russia doesn't have the full coverage of civilian targets it, Russia definitely has the air defense very effective in that which uh, actually defends their uh, position of troops uh, some critical strategic level uh, uh, plants or uh, all kinds of other industries so that sure but as we already know that the first storm shadow have been shut down to uh, shut down today and uh, as i already stated it's just it's war it this is how it proceeds somebody tries to attack you into some kind like what ukraine usually does blowing up the civilian targets killing civilians and yes that those two storm shadows which uh, have been launched at lugansk they killed actually civilians including uh, uh, the uh, wounding uh, up to six children so and this is official information and uh, it's all a part of this uh, media attack uh, including the uh, what is amounting now to the ambush of russian su-34 and mi-8 uh, helicopter over the bransk oblast and as always uh, you might expect a lot of speculation a lot of media attacks and uh, actually there is still ministry of defense of russian federation didn't confirm while confirming the loss of su-34 and one of mi-8 didn't confirm su-35 i don't know where this uh, thing uh, comes from i know the uh, origin uh, of the news itself at least uh in the media was commerçant which is for all intents and purposes is the enemy it's the uh, combination of people who many of whom are probably the uh, if not uh, direct but at least unwitting uh, assets of the uh, Ukrainian propaganda and this is not the first time when commerçant was spreading misinformation but yes there was a MI8 and a SU-34 shut down now for those hysterical people who begin to talk about the black day of 
Russian aviation. Just look up the news recently uh, that uh, three of the Russian pilots have been actually returned back to Russia during the exchange. Russia does lose some combat aircraft once in a while. It's war, I'm sorry. And while uh, people many don't understand what is going on, it's very simply uh, put is the fact that they're all everything pretty much what we what we see and hear for the last well i would say couple of months it's non-stop promise of this counter offensive but here what we have to go and keep in mind i am on the record read my lips 99 percent of the so-called correspondents and journalists including military correspondents are basically low lives uh, journalism as such, first, it's not a legitimate profession to start with. And journalism is pretty much the same old profession as that of the prostitutes, but at least in prostitutes you know what you get. You pay money, they provide valuable service in terms of the how they call it nowadays. Sex workers, I, I believe, hey, that's an honest buck, you know. And the prostitutes who sell themselves for the honest buck, yeah, it's 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 job if you wish to say it or present it this way. Journalism is completely different. You see, there are journalists, especially Western journalists, be that American or let alone British, just you know, move to the other side of the uh, 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 basically street, not to get herpes by just breathing their air with them. And here it is. Now we're going to talk a little bit about Russian journalists, and this is what is was happening on with this counter offensive thing it created two days ago an absolute panic in russian media which tells you how much those people who are basically supposed to know how they don't know anything and here it is uh, if you look attentively and including this is this piece is from the uh, Russian uh, uh, well it's kind of tabloid uh, type thing Pravda dot are you know it's not the communist Pravda it's just Pravda dot are you it's a kind of as I already stated yellowish it's tabloidish but even they suddenly recognized what was happening two days ago, and it was started by three low lives. The names of those lives were, well, the famous correspondents, Alexander Simonov, Evgeny Podubny, and Alexander Kotz. None of them, as you might expect, is professional military, so consequently they love to call themselves, uh, you know, military correspondents. They put on the, you know... Uh, those um, vests you know bulletproof vests put on the helmets and go to the front line and because of that they think that they know how wars are what they don't not only that but they are becoming now increasingly and almost you know now beginning to reach the level of the western media they becoming the spreaders of the rumors and panics and here it is in quotation mark the title of the article says the armed forces of ukraine broke through and are actually going towards Belgorod. And here's the comes which in, on, uh, uh, underlined uh, in red is the question. Why those wine cars, which is mean military correspondent, organized panic in Russia? And here is the thing which you need to understand. For example, on the photo is Mr. Alexander Podubny. Mr. Oh, yeah, pardon me, Evgeny Podubny. He works for the Russia, uh, which is the major Russian network. And the guy actually by the profession is psychologist. So he possibly is the adrenaline junkie and he gets around into those old hot spots. And you look at all that basically... Uh, plethora so to speak of those people in Russian media and yeah they are no better than for example any kind of the Nyakon BS's from uh, let's say Newsweek or CNN so they also are in misinformation and some of them like Mr. Slatkov actually openly admitted this on their uh, in the, in the uh, live broadcast which was really stunning so the guy said yeah we just make shit up Pardon my friend. And so when you look at this, it's um, you really need to ask the question, uh, how do you know about what is going on? And here's the issue. 
uh, the war, and this is the real first war of the 21st century, inevitably gets all kinds of people who try to capitalize. And I already stated that there is a lot of money involved. And if you have more, more subscribers on many platforms, guess what? It monetizes you. But, but, especially when we begin to see at how this uh, so-called uh, uh, Ukrainian counteroffensive fails dramatically, People kind of lose the perspective of it. And this is that what makes the difference between, for example, me and let alone the combat officers and real journalists who some of them my good friends. And I'm talking about people with the highest ethics and morals and uh, professional integrity. And I'm talking about prof also not just journalists like this, but I also talk about the officers, some of them senior, very senior officers whom I know who are real combat officers, who are people with the great professional integrity and very well educated and very well experienced, you begin to understand what you are dealing with, with this phenomenon of the all those what Russians call hyperjars, which means literally hype eaters. They don't have honor, they don't have anything. The only thing they want to sell is story. If they don't have story and good news do not sell, they have to sell the bad news. And if they don't have bad news, guess what? They make them up. And of course, after the situation which was happening with this uh, 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 so-called breakthrough and counteroffensive, which was flatly denied, and it was uh, by Russian Minister of Defense, Ministry of Defense, and obviously it was later confirmed that those guys simply were lying and pretending that something is happening. We can see now the situation that uh, even Mr. Brent Hodges and I, I don't know, guys, I really how this guy even uh, graduated West Point. Yeah, I believe that was already easy then, but look at this. He came up with this uh, kind of excuse, which is one of the one of the most outstanding things uh, in terms of the complete lack of thought put in it. And that's what he says, because obviously there is no real counteroffensive and whatever the attacks uh, in the primarily uh, company, maybe battalion level uh, uh, strengths, uh, armed forces of Ukraine try to perform to show that they are doing something. Here's Mr. Ben Hodges saying that the only thing I think that can screw this up, meaning counteroffensive, is if the West exerts so much pressure on Ukraine and it causes them to stop short of a total victory, he told the outlet speaking to some kind of whatever the uh, hell this outlet is and you begin to really scratch your head I mean because this doesn't even fit into the normal uh, logic of the uh, you know high schooler and when you begin to uh, ask yourself a question how why I mean how and why those people uh, come up with these uh, things because they are reasonable I mean they are preposterous uh, well you begin to understand that basically it's all about uh, failed expectations because as I already stated on many occasions and not only me and as I already stated you know the circle of people with whom I fit I do not necessarily know them all personally but if you look attentively at the circle of people most of them are Intel and military professionals, and I'm talking to professionals, uh, be that Larry Johnson, be that Brian Berletich, be that uh, Colonel McGregor, be that uh, just Scott Ritter, and you can go on and on and on, there are many people like that, then you begin to understand that among professionals, including among uh, Russian professionals, everybody knows the algorithm and everybody knows what is going to happen. And what is going to happen, the uh, Ukraine, which doesn't have required force, and you have to have academic, military, academic background and serious experience in staffs especially, to be able to understand how the, the required force is calculated how it is formed, how it is basically shaped, and how it deploys, then you have to understand that as my friend Marat Hairulin, who actually uh, is an outstanding military correspondent and a very humble man, but he also works for uh, Channel One in Russia. Uh, and he stated, I mean, even on the battalion level, uh, uh, as he says, our guys on, in the front, they can see, even on battalion level, about 30 kilometers deep. So it means on the level of the battalion commander and his staff, which is so very small staff, battalions have extremely small staffs, 
they actually know and they are operationally uh, or tactically and situationally aware on the depth of 30 kilometers into the uh, Ukrainian territory. We're not talking about the high level of the brigade, let alone division or corps. And that's when you understand that they actually they see all theater. And you cannot explain to those people. You cannot explain to some uh, journal from Washington Post, even if we imagine this incredible, let's say, fantastic, I mean, absolutely fairy tale uh, assumption that there are moral people and ethical people who work there and who want to actually uh, report news. You cannot under explain to them what does it mean in terms of the combat control of the troops and why this ISR, Intelligence Surveillance and Reconnaissance Complex, is so important. For example, like this attack of the Storm Shadow uh, on Lugansk, on the peaceful uh, objects there. Two of those missiles exploded and you know the civilians were killed, six children wind, wounded, there are other civilians wounded and maimed and so uh, this is, happens very simply uh, by means of the United States and NATO but primarily United States providing the uh, intelligence 24-7. Uh, there are all kinds of the sign-in signal intelligence uh, uh, assets in the air near the borders of Ukraine who deal with 24-7 with the issue of the what is called electromagnetic map. Because obviously what they try to track is they try to track how the Russian radar and other sensors which they can actually gather, collect information on, operate, and what are the, for example, schedules, and when some, for example, radar goes offline, because none of them, no uh, uh, equipment can work 24-7, 365, without necessity to cool down, to rest, to be a uh, serviced. So, and yeah, that's what they uh, feed Ukrainians. But as already stated, Russians are also not idiots, and they <clears throat> understand actually how to deal with this. But yes, <clears throat> they actually provide the targeting uh, for the uh, possible gaps in the air defense, and that's when they make the whole fuss about. Same uh, uh, happens about those aircraft shut down. Is which I already, uh, some people call it black day of Russian aviation. Okay, you lost one. Uh, yeah, it's a very high level, high qu uh, quality and high value asset like SU-34. But these are the pilots who died, who really matter, not the uh, machine itself. And same goes for the MI-8 with the VTIPS uh, 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 electronic countermeasure systems. And they were over their own territory. And again, the question uh, let the FSB and those p other people deal with those. They know the information. We don't. And that's what happens. There's speculation from all kinds of the military experts, quote unquote, who are not military experts, who wouldn't know how the targeting is done, who don't know how the firing solution is developed. And they will begin to speculate across the board producing some in copious amount of BS. And so, just to demonstrate to you that why people do not understand and really lose perspective, this is uh, Khmelnytsky two days ago, and um, as you can see yourself, even those guys from, you know, Yahoo News, they cannot really uh, uh, cover this up because it's not one explosion. There were actually several explosions in Khmelnytsky, which uh, some people say now annihilated up to half a billion dollars worth of the Western equipment. Some uh, British guys uh, try to pretend that they, uh, they really matter in military terms. They say, oh, there's, uh, you know, some British depleted uranium thing. Okay, whatever it is, but you can look it up and it's on the, uh, on the YouTube and you will see yourself what was the Russian uh, uh, response. And then there are, of course, attacks on Chernobyl and many people do not understand that once those two uh, aircraft have been shut down over Bryansk, you had a strategic aviation in the air and there were uh, uh, air uh, alarms uh, and... Uh, you know, sirens all over Ukraine, and this didn't uh, uh, limit itself only to the issue of Khmelnytsky, where those horrendous
those explosions have been and those uh, storages and ammunition depots have been blown up but also Chernobyl and Sumy and other places uh, in Ukraine but people just do not want to uh, basically notice it because obviously they do not want to get off this uh, adrenaline rush and that is why well I'm sorry to say that text people like me who say yeah you know what yeah it's it's painful absolutely but this is pin prick you know in reality because you need to look at the overall situation strategic situation if you don't believe me you go listen to Colonel McGregor and he has unlike me credentials in the United States being the former senior advisor to chief of the Pentagon and he speaks about this very clearly and I don't want to go describing also some other issues which are nothing more than tactical minutia and most of it actually the way it's reported quote unquote in the West is nothing more than misinformation. So and when you uh, we kind of continue to go over this uh, a little bit more and let me explain and give you another perspective on the whole special military operation which many people cannot keep in mind they may even uh, that's what differs professional from uh, amateur for example they may even understand some things but unlike professionals who internalize it and they keep this in mind 24 7 uh, um, amateurs and people who do not have their background in the warfare they may actually get it and then they forget it and they will not internalize it and they will not act upon it and here's the difference let me show you something uh two days ago i believe no actually yesterday in the red star mr sokolov vice admiral victor sokolov he who is the commander in chief of the black sea fleet and he was talking about the general state of the fleet he was uh, he was enjoy enjoying the fact that one of the newest corvettes have been commissioned to the black sea fleet is on the baltic then it will do the uh, it will circumnavigate europe and will get into uh, uh into sevastopol and then there are three karakurt class uh small missile ships all capable of carrying the 3m14 and 3m54 caliber missiles and in the future zircon missiles but look what he stated when he was was uh, explaining how the Black Sea Fleet is participating in the uh, special military operation and just keep this in mind because this is important this is what people do not understand here it is let me translate to you what is underlined in red frigates small missile ships and submarines of their uh, Black Sea Fleet, which have which are armed with the missile complexes caliber, struck or dealt strikes on more than 180 critical objects of the enemy, and those objects range from the system of the air defense to uh, basically positions of the uh, temporary uh, lo uh, location of the uh, uh, formations of the armed forces of Ukraine including the uh, 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 missile artillery uh, ammunition depots and things of this nature including also air bases and railroad stations ha more than 180 then of course the what is called BRAV, Birigavi Raketna Artillerijskie Vaiska, the coastal uh, units of the missile artillery troops of the Black Sea Fleet, which are armed with the complexes Bastion. It's a famous Bastion with the P-800 Onyx long-range uh, missiles and BAL, which shoots uh, KH-35, also struck more than 70 objects. And so what does that mean? And let me explain. I did this calculation in my um, in my blog yesterday, but let that gives you some perspective, so to speak. It gives you some understanding of what is going on. One hundred eighty objects. Of, so, what are the objects? It, you cannot shoot one missile and hope for it to hit something. Well, but you can hope for it, and sometimes it will, but. You have to understand, most of the time, 99% of the time, the uh, attacks on the targets, which, for example, Black Sea Fleet and its uh, uh, ships and submarines did, they are done in salvas. 
and salvos can range anywhere from to four missiles to 16 missiles and yesterday i did the simple mathematics i stated you know what let's take the average uh, um, average salvo of what usually the ships of the black sea fleet do that it's usually about six they can range anywhere as i already stated between two and four to 16. and for example if you need to blow the railroad station you obviously need more than two or four missiles so the average salvo i would state it was about six missiles and if you multiply 180 by 6, you already see that, that the Black Sea Fleet just from the ships and submarines launched around 1,080 missiles in the last 14 months. What does it mean? Um, let me po point it uh, to you kind of in a very simple way. United States has this missile. And it's, of course, we all know it as UGM R, uh, um, and uh, um, UGM and RGM uh, or AGM uh, 109 Tomahawk. And let's go to the Raytheon, the uh, producer of these uh, missiles, and see what is the uh, combat score of these missiles. And here it is. When describing the uh, uh, Tomahawk, especially its GPS-enabled enabled, uh, version, and this starts from the Block 3, and it actually saw the action first time in 1993. Look what they say, that for the 30 years, basically, the GPS-enabled Tomahawk has been flight tested 550 times and used in combat more than 2,300 times. Its most recent use came in 2018 when U.S. Navy warships and submarines launched 66 Tomahawks missiles and serial chemical weapons facilities. You might not remember this uh, snafu, but most of those missiles have been intercepted. But, as you can see yourself, if you begin to add also all those 70 objects and uh, just um, the uh, uh, used by the BRAF, which is Coastal Missile Artillery Troops of the Black Sea Fleet, and you add this together, so you will probably run up at uh, Black Sea Fleet alone alone just the black sea and this is not a very large fleet it's, it's substantial but uh, you already have around like what 13 1400 uh, uh missiles uh, long range standoff high precision missiles launched this is within 14 months now you begin to put it together and see for yourself how often the missiles have been used and you will understand that within 14 months russia used number of times more standoff high precision missiles especially when you go to the strategic aviation which of course uh, uh, uses the x uh, kh101 kh555 kh32 and you will begin to understand the scale and it dwarfs the combat use of the tomahawks in 30 years so this is just a little bit of the mathematical perspective on the simplest of the simplest lowest level operational study because it tells you the operational tempo and the intensity of the combat and this also immediately testifies to you at the size of Russian economy and its massive capability of its military industrial complex. But, of course, as you always know, you know, the guy from some front line, some enlisted guy and the uh, military journal who has no clue what the combat control is, they begin to spread all kinds of news and very, you know, uh, how to say it, pathos ridden titles, when in reality, we know what is happening. Uh, Ukraine indeed doesn't have the ability to do any kind of counteroffensive, and you can see the panic in the West because of that. But, but, what can I say? It's it's like trying to really uh, to show people literally uh, how to put it to show them black and they will still stay state people with do not who are not daltonics and they can understand cars they still will continue to tell you that it's uh, white because what because they read media let me put it this way i spoke so many times on this and again 99 percent of the media and the experts they have no clue and i also am on record and you can quote me uh, on this now i begin to really doubt that many uh i mean 
media military experts in the in the United States and West are really that competent at all. They definitely don't understand what modern warfare is. So and even uh, this guy, I mean this, you know, you know this guy, you know, cocaine sniffing dude who is basically already turned Ukraine into the terrorist state, which is supported obviously by Great Britain and the United States. Uh, but even he yesterday stated that in Berlin that while uh, Kyiv doesn't have forces to uh, conduct any kind of counteroffensive uh, into depths to, uh, of Russia. Well, it's really funny that he says this because um, if he tries to do anything in terms of depths in Russia, I mean, yeah, then Russia indeed will stop doing special military operation and she will start the war. And keep in mind, the guy still traveling abroad, is he coming back to Ukraine? I don't know. So don't ask me. But before I go, I want to point some other two very important uh, uh, pieces of news which you might find <laughs> very interesting. First, of course, Finns are now desperate. Look at this. Helsinki in Sanomat um, two days ago started, uh, uh, started complaining that now Russian FSB, which is of course border guards, they begin to annul business visas of uh, uh, the uh, people who live uh, along the border with Russia and those Finns. And they of course are very, you know, not happy about it. You know why they're not happy about it? Because obviously those Finns and very many of them, they tend to go to Russian site and get gas tanks filled with Russian cheap gas and they love shopping in Russia because it is cheaper. And guess what? Now this is closed and what can I say? You know, uh, it's Finland and fin Finnish people can blame only themselves because why should Russia provide cheap gas to people who wanted to become part of NATO? And that's what Russians do. You know what? I know it's uh, not very pleasant to be on the receiving end, but what can I say? And so, in conclusion, also, this is the funny thing. I laughed, honestly. I really laughed. Uh, and this is uh, what Mr. Trump stated that uh, it's written by this guy, De Petris, who obviously uh, he writes for all kinds of the stupid outlets in the United States. And he's talking about what Trump gets right on Ukraine. Trump's answer to several questions on the conflict generated immediate pushback for being insufficiently supportive of Ukraine in the face of Russian aggression, including from many members of his own party. And this is about his town hall meeting and when he stated that he can, uh, you know, stop the war and things like that. No, he can't. He couldn't run his own White House and the guy was nothing is there, you know, hot air balloon, hot air bag. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to lie, obviously, I will never vote for any kind of the Democratic candidate because this is a party of perverts and pedophiles, basically. But uh, Trump, even if you imagine that he runs, he will screw it up the same way as he did the first time when he appointed every single neocon hawk in his administrations. And as a result, his so-called good intentioned foreign policy was sabotaged completely because the guy obviously is a big mouse. I don't think so. He has any good uh, qualities in terms of the statesmanship. Will he learn or did he learn? I don't know. Sure, between some kind of, between Biden and Trump, I would vote for Trump. But I mean, this is like choosing between uh, bad and worse. So. And this is what I wanted to tell you today. And uh, as all these guys, those who like what I do, please subscribe to my channel and you know support me on Patreon and uh, buy me a coffee too. I really appreciate your support and my patrons. And so have a nice rest of your week and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye.